Hey, friends. Sometimes when I'm listening to John Prine's very first album, all those great songs, I'll sit back and imagine what it would be like to walk into a folk club in Chicago and hear John Prine, an unknown singer-songwriter, you know, just singing all of those songs and hearing them for the first time in that environment. It seems like it would be an amazing thing to witness and be part of. Well, the great film critic Roger Ebert was fortunate enough to witness just that. Roger Ebert was sent to review a movie, and he ended up not liking it. He walked out. He later said that the popcorn was too salty, so he was looking for somewhere to have a beer. He walked down the street, and he saw a folk club called The Fifth Peg, walked inside, got a beer, sat down, and was blown away by the guy playing on stage. That night, he saw an unknown John Prine singing almost all of the songs off of that first album. He's singing Angel from Montgomery, Sam Stone, Illegal Smile, Hello in There, Your Flag de Cow Won't Get You Into Heaven Anymore, Donald and Lydia. It's all of these all-time great songs. Roger Ebert got to hear them, and it just blew him away, completely blew him away. He's thinking, who in the hell is this guy? This guy's great. So the next day, he goes in and tells his editors he wants to write about the amazing guy that he saw last night at a folk club, and he wasn't going to write the movie review. Now, Roger Ebert wasn't a music critic. You know, he didn't write about music, but he knew he wanted to write about John Prine. So that next day, he wrote John Prine's very first ever review, first time he was ever written about. And the headline was, Singing Mailman Delivers Powerful Message in a Few Words. And at that time, you know, Roger Ebert had a huge voice. Your local music critic, you know, or your local movie critic, they were well-respected and everybody in town read it. But Ebert was a whole nother level. And the people of Chicago trusted him. So when he wrote about this amazing, gifted, you know, young singer songwriter who was playing on the stages there in Chicago and how everybody needed to go and see them, people immediately started packing into Prine's gigs. You know, Prine, just a few years earlier, had just gotten out of the Army. He was uh, stationed in West Germany, got out of the Army, came to Chicago and was working as a mailman. He was delivering the mail all over town and writing songs in his spare time. And he showed up to the Old Town Fo School of Folk Music. And if you've never been to the Old Town School of Folk Music, you need to. That is an amazing, beautiful place. They do wonderful work. They have a great history. And John Prine, you know, showed up and he's doing open mics. And after a little while, people were like, this guy's pretty good. So, uh, the fifth peg was associated with the Old Town School of Folk Music, and they put him on on Sundays. And he did pretty well and ended up playing on the weekends, and that's when Roger Ebert stumbled in. Now, when Roger Ebert wrote about Prine, a lot of other people around town started taking note, and one of those people was Studs Terkel, the great Studs Terkel. He had a radio show in Chicago for, I believe, 45 years, Amazing voice in Chicago, well-respected and loved worldwide. He would have people on like Martin Luther King, Lawrence Ferlinghetti, Bob Dylan, Allen Ginsberg, James Baldwin. Just a lot of really cool, interesting people he would have on his radio show. And those archives are out there. I'll put a link to them down below so you can check them out. And they're well worth looking into. If there's anybody out there associated with those archives, thank you. And if you could put an RSS feed on those so I could listen to it the same way I listen to podcasts, I'll pay you all $20 a month to do that. Just saying, but I digress. So Studs Terkel has Prine on his radio show, opens him up to a huge audience, introduces him to a lot of people in Chicago, the exact audience that John Prine would probably want to reach. And afterwards, Studs Terkel makes this offer. He says, if you would like to record some songs here at the radio station tonight, I can send them into the Library of Congress and have them copywritten for you. So Prine does that, and he records 11 songs. Those 11 songs 
back in 1970 by a 23-year-old wet behind the ears John Prine were released years later on Oh Boy Records and it's I believe the record is called The Singing Mailman Delivers. It's wonderful. You should look it up and listen to it if you're a John Prine fan. It's just a great glimpse into a very young unknown John Prine. A John Prine's buddy Steve Goodman ends up opening up for Chris Christopherson somewhere in Chicago. And he's working on him all night saying, man, you got to hear this guy, John Prine. You got to go hear him. And uh, when they were done, Christofferson agrees to go over and hear John Prine do a late night set with Steve Goodman. And Christo Chris Christofferson was completely blown away. He couldn't believe, you know, hearing these songs, Angel from Montgomery, you know, <laughs> hearing that by some unknown guy. He's just completely blown away. He later said it was like seeing Bob Dylan in Greenwich Village when he was completely unknown. So Chris Christofferson invites John Prine and Steve Goodman to come to New York and open up a gig at the Bitter End. And he also arranges for Jerry Wexler, this industry giant who was uh, instrumental in the careers of uh, Aretha Franklin, Led Zeppelin, you know, the Allman Brothers. He's the guy who invented the term rhythm and blues. He has him out to see Prine. Wexler is completely blown away, as everyone was when they saw Prine. And he signs him to Atlantic Records the next morning. And they go on to record that very first record in Memphis. And all of this was made possible because people along the way, you know, witnessed something that they thought were amazing and they introduced it to someone else. You know, they turned someone else onto Prine's music, whether it be the Old Town School of Folk Music, when they made it possible for him to have a stage there, a you know, stage that Roger Ebert could walk in and listen to John Prine on. Roger Ebert took the time to, you know, care about it enough to write about it so more people would know. You know, Studs Terkel, Take the time to tell people about it. Chris Christofferson, Steve Goodman for just being a solid friend and turning people on to his friend who he thought was great. You know, all of those people made it possible so that all of those great John Prine songs could make it into the, the American songbook and be part of our lives. The Fifth Peg is no longer a folk club. It went out of business a long time ago, but in the building where it once stood is a coffee shop now. And when this... Uh, pandemic finally ends, I'm going to drive up to Chicago and I'm going to go in that coffee shop. I'm going to order a coffee. I'm going to go sit in the corner. I'm going to put some earbuds in and close my eyes and listen to that John Prine recording of uh, Studs Terkel did in that radio station, The Singing Mailman Delivers. I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to imagine that I'm sitting in the fifth peg and listening to John Prine in 1970. I might even imagine I'm sitting next to Roger Ebert. And when I'm done doing that, I'm going to head over to the Old Town School of Folk Music, and I'm going to take in a gig. And, man, it's going to feel so good to be back into the regular old world and back into the swing of things. And if any of you guys are in Chicago or near Chicago and would like to join me, I would absolutely love to have the company. It'd be great to see you guys. That's my promise to you guys. I'll announce it before I do it. I hope some of you guys will join me. But if you have a favorite John Prine memory, you know, favorite John Prine album or song, tell me about it in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. But click the like button, share this with your friends or on whatever forums, and I will talk to you guys soon. And here's the better days.